Welcome back, friends, to Build a Lot Acres. My name's Case. I'm Brett, as you all know. In today's video, we're going to be talking about the best attachments and implements for your garden tractor. Stay tuned. Mm -hmm. So Brett here says to me, Dad, you've been doing all wood videos, whether it be milling or firewood, why don't we do a tractor video? And I said, son, that's a great idea. So as a backdrop to today's video, we have the Rugged Simplicity Sunstar GTH 20 for your viewing pleasure. And we're gonna get into the best attachments and implements you need to have for your guide tractor. So what do you think, Brett? What do you think would be the number one implement or attachment you would need for your guide tractor? I really think it depends on where you live. Cause let's say you live in, I don't know, somewhere like New Mexico, Arizona, where there isn't really a lot of grass, it's pretty sandy. Well, obviously you wouldn't need something like a mower or deck in order to need something like a snow plow, snow blower, cause it doesn't snow. Mm. Whereas if you live somewhere like here, you'd obviously need something like a mower deck cause it, we have plenty of grass. You need something like a snow blower or snow plow cause we get snow. But I think, in general, the number one most useful attachment to have would be a mower deck, by far. I would agree, and that's probably the reason that you see pretty much every tractor is sold with a mower deck, because most people are gonna need to mow grass at some point throughout the year. So, I mean, depending on your model tractor, there's different size decks, which is nice, and most decks are gonna be powered with a drive belt coming off a pulley from the engine. And you also are going to have hydraulic decks, you're going to have shaft driven decks, but you know, they're going to come anywhere from let's say 42 inches up to about 60 inches. That's going to be most common sizes. There are exceptions. Obviously some tractors have bigger decks, some lawn tractors have smaller decks, but this video is geared mainly towards true garden tractors, which if you don't know the difference, so we have a whole video, I'll link at the end of this video, explaining the difference between a lawn tractor, a yard tractor and a guard tractor. Yes. So what do you think would be the number two implement? I think after that you'd have to say it'd be a snow plow or a snow blower. Why do you think that? Because I feel like a lot of the other implements are a little more niche, but I feel like everyone, if they have grass, they need to be able to cut grass. And if people get snow, you know, they need to be able to take care of it. They can't just let the snow sit. Mm. This is a very good point. Uh, I would have to agree with Brett on that. So obviously, you know, we live in New England, so we get four distinct seasons, like a lot of the country gets in a lot of different areas. But, you know, it seems like you really get winter and summer the main seasons, and then fall and spring kind of get shorter. Seems like every year, at least to me. But yeah, I would say winter snow removal was one of the biggest things I do here on my property. I have a long paved driveway, it used to be gravel. And I used to maintain the whole thing with just garden tractors for a number of years before I got the Coyote or the Ford. And they do do the ticket. You can save yourself a lot of money versus hiring a snow plowing guy. And it gives you an excuse to buy some toys and go out and have some fun on those snowy winter days. And who doesn't love that? I think we need to tell them a Nemo story. I think we do. So it was February 9th, 2013, the day that lives in infamy. God! <laughs> so I plowed for the state for about 40 hours, clearing the roads. I didn't even realize how much we had gotten because I was plowing a few inches at a time and it all kind of was a white blur at the end of the 40 or so hours. I was dead tired. I went and got Brett, picked him up, and we came back to my house and I had the full 31 inches in the driveway and I had limited options to clear it and believe it or not, we cleared my 900 foot long driveway with the Sears SS14 with a 39 inch snow throw, which is a single stage snow blower. And even at that time, the tractor was, I think, what, 42 years old? 1971 to 2013. So yeah. Yes, it was 42 years old at that time. I'll tell people now and they kind of snicker and you can tell they don't really believe me, but it's absolutely true. We both witnessed it in person. 
But it's actually, I was the one running the Sears because my father was on a different tractor at the time, a Craftsman GT6000. With a blade. And he was plowing the snow more or less into the center of the driveway, and then I was just blowing through it. It was so deep, the snow pretty much came up to the top of the hood of the SS14. I actually had to shovel it down so the brick could snow blow. And we did the whole driveway that way, and it was a monster storm for sure. But yeah, I would say. Snow removal equipment, whether it be a plow or a snow blower, has to be the number two implement. So what would we say is number three? Um, I'd say number three would probably be some sort of leaf collection system. This is true. So whether that be a bagger, which you could also use for mowing, whether that be something like a leaf catcher, mm. you know, it doesn't matter what it is, just something to collect the leaves. Mm. I'd say that's a very important thing to have if you have trees. Yeah, I would say that's a great option. I mean, you know, you guys can hand rake if you want. I prefer not to. I actually like using a backpack blower, but a leaf collection system on a tractor is definitely an easy way to go. You can just sit in the machine, drive around, fill up the collection system, go empty it, do it again. And the amount of leaves we get here, it's definitely a worthwhile thing to have. Oh yeah, definitely. I think another implement that a lot of people have, and it's probably one of the top ones, would be a land plow Yes. for the back of the tractor. Most of the older tractors are gonna use it on a sleeve hitch. They also make them for three-point hitches and you can sometimes you can get adapters to go from a sleeve to a three-point and vice versa. But if you like gardening and you need to plow up your land and plant crops, I would say a land plow is probably one of the top implements for you. Yeah, definitely. So I mean, some of the other implements, I'm not gonna get into every single one, you know, in great detail, but you have harrows, you have cultivators, uh, York rakes, that's another big one I would say. If you have a bigger tractor, like a super garden tractor, something with a three-point hitch, I'll tell you what, a York rake is a really, really handy thing to have. I've had a few different size rakes. I've had a couple of four-foot York brand rakes. I've had a five-foot York rake. And I have a big seven-footer land pride rake for the Coyote, and I use it all the time. It's probably one of my most used attachments. However, I think there's an input you're forgetting. What's that? A garden cart. That's just true. I don't know how we even think of that. Especially if you don't have a front end loader, which we're gonna get into a little later in the video. That's true. That might go up over some of the other implements that we already talked about. That for, say, if you have a lot of garden beds and you can mulch or dirt around or... Firewood. Firewood, of course. Rocks. Rocks. Yeah, this is true. I didn't even think of that. Yeah, that's a very good that one. Could, that could potentially move up into the top three. Yeah, I, I really do. I think that some sort of little garden cart, you know, kind of thing. Mm. Mower decks and then probably snow plow slash snow blower. Those yeah. are the top three. Yeah, I would say that's probably sold with, you know, especially back in the 70s, 80s, 90s. Those are probably sold with most tractors. Yeah, I remember that a lot of the brochures that you have that I've looked at, they've all had... Right on front, someone mowing, someone pulling stuff around with the cart, and someone normally snow blowing. Yeah, I would say that's that's very true. I forgot about that. So I'm glad you brought that up. Yeah. But I mean, they came in a number of sizes. You know, typically they're going to be somewhere between three and five feet long and are approximately thirty to thirty-six inches wide, but. They can hold quite a bit of material and usually they'll have a manual dumping system so that you can dump it and drive away and do what you need to do. I've also owned, you know, fancier, bigger carts, the hydraulically dumped, which you've seen in some of my other videos with the super tilt. I've owned country manufacturing wagons and I would say wagons, carts in general, trailers are one of the most handy attachments you could have really for any size tractor, but especially smaller you know, smaller garden tractors, which typically aren't going to have front end loaders. Another nice thing about them is they're one of the most universal attachments too. If a tractor has any sort of attachment point on the back, whether it be a three point, a sleeve hitch, a ball hitch. You don't even need any of that to tow. You can just tow it with the regular plate tow hitch that yeah, all the tractors come with standard. Any, any way to tow anything, it can have a garden cart hooked up to it. And there's no moving parts, so there's really not much to maintain, and they're very really not that expensive to buy. No. You, if you look, you can find them online for free to say 20, 30 bucks for decent ones. So I think you know 
Another, another important attachment that you could have, this is going to be more of a specialty attachment, but that's going to be a sickle bar mower. Yes. That's going to be really handy if you have areas you need to cut and you really can't drive into it with your tractor, like if you need, especially if you need to do like a ditch along a ravine or maybe around a pond and it was too wet and you couldn't get in there to get stuck. I would say a sickle bar mower is probably one of the handy attachments. It's definitely in the top, you know, I'd say five to ten. However, like you had said, that's a very niche, very specialized implement. Like, I feel like if you need that, you need that, and if you don't, you don't kind of thing. Yeah. So another one that I would say would be a hydro cutter. So another one I would say... <laughs> Jeez! So another one I would say would be a rough cut mower, sometimes called a bush hog or a rotary cutter. You know, it's going to be a rough cut mower for small saplings, thicker grass, things you really don't want to use a regular mower on. The case Ingersoll's actually had their own version. It was called a hydro cutter. It was hydraulically powered. And I believe that was rated to go up to two inch thick material, which, you know, that's pretty thick stuff. Yeah, uh, that's like little trees. The know. problem with getting into material like that is you gotta push it over first before you run over it. And then you have issues with it could spring up, hit the underside of your tractor. So you really want like a skid plate or something to prevent that from happening. And that's why Case Ingersoll sold a bumper for the front of the tractor to push that stuff over before you rough cut it with a hydro cutter. A lot of the other tractors didn't have the hydraulic capabilities like the Case Ingersolls to run such an implement. Yeah, like if you've seen our video on what makes the Case Ingersoll such a unique brand, you know how much greater the um, hydraulic flow is on them versus basically any other machine because but even the drive train yeah even the hydrostatic you got double the flow double the pressure which is really handy for running the k singasol three-point hydraulic attachments like the wood splitter the chipper the hydro cutter etc etc yeah all of that it's very handy so i think the last implement we're going to talk about is probably a front end loader which i'd say is a very niche implement and it I would doesn't say so too. really work well with a lot of machines yeah i would say most garden tractors they don't have the physical size the frame they're not four-wheel drive i mean it's still better than having no front end loader but i mean at the end of the day it's still a lot better than a wheelbarrow and it can really be useful for the right tap for the right machine i would say it's really going to be geared towards the bigger Garden tractors such as the Simplicity Power Max. Um, I know that I don't know about any other brands, but I know that K Singersol actually had the 600 series and then the 6000 and 7000 series, which were purpose built bucket tractors specifically for front end loader usage. Yeah, I also think it'd work really well on something like a John Deere 430 with it being big, with it being diesel. I yeah, really I would agree sell on something like that. The biggest of the super guide tractors were designed to have front end loaders, whereas a lot of the smaller guide tractors really weren't. So that's why they also made things like Johnny buckets, which is kind of like a half loader. It just goes on the front of the tractor, only lifts up you know, a certain height, maybe a couple feet or so. Kind of gives you some of the functionality of a loader without the price point and all the added you know, stuff you'd have to do to make a front end loader fit onto your machine. Yeah, I'd say that there's a good midway between no loader and full loader. Yeah, so you know, obviously there's so many attachments, you really can't cover all of them. Try to cover some of the more commonly seen ones that you might come across, you might own. If you have specific implements that you think are worth noting or sharing, please leave it in the comments below. And we will see you guys in the next one.